It's recovery time, and this one's a doozy. The water level is dropping like eight inches a day down Lake Mead right now. It's terrifying. An old guy lives on his houseboat down there full time. He took it out to go fishing, motor went out, the mechanic finally responded like four days later. By then, the boat was completely out of the water. That's this guy's home. It's the only place he has to live. He doesn't have a lot of money, and we're not about to see this guy go homeless, so. I can't believe there's good people in the world anymore. It's been quite an ordeal. I mean, anything and everything that could go wrong, deal. Yeah. <laughs> we sure are. Yeah, right, man. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's recovery time, and this one's a doozy. This is a big one. You see, yesterday, a YouTube page called Sin City Outdoors posted a video about a houseboat that became stranded down in Lake Mead. Many of you probably saw it. All right, so how, how'd you get trapped? I was just out joyriding, basically, out testing it. It stalled on me. The water level drops about eight inches a day. So your motor went out, so you pulled off to the I, edge. I, I, I drifted into the shore, that's why I ended up. So now, three weeks later, you're completely out, or a couple weeks? Two weeks. Two weeks, completely right. out of the water. That's the boat we're speaking of right there. Right as soon as the video got posted, I literally started getting an email every 15 to 20 seconds. Checked it out, saw the situation, and I was like, damn, that guy's in a bad situation. Long story short, an old guy lives on his houseboat down there full time. He took it out to go fishing, motor went out, so he kind of like drifted towards the shore and was kind of beaching it there, waiting for a mechanic to come. Well, the mechanic never showed up, and the water level is dropping like eight inches a day down Lake Mead right now. It's terrifying. Like, this is the worst that it's ever been because of the, the Great Western Drought. So what happened was the mechanic finally responded like four days later. By then, the boat was completely out of the water. It's now been out of the water for two weeks, and you'll see the pictures. The boat's literally just sitting there. It's a 42-foot houseboat. The guy lives on full-time, and... He's just stuck, there's nothing he can do. So these Sin City Outdoor guys posted this video and said, hey, if there's anybody who can help, this guy needs it. Senior said, if you guys got the resources, I mean, you could come be a good human, do some humanitarian aid and give a fellow fisherman a hand. And of course, that piqued my attention. So I jumped right on it. I left a comment on the YouTube video because I didn't have any way to contact him and just said, hey, is there any way that somebody can put us in touch with the guy? And uh, within about an hour, Adrian from Sin City Outdoors was on the beach with Craig, the owner of the boat, which super cool guy. Put me in touch with him. I started talking with him. I got super emotional. Uh, hearing the story, basically the, fourth, the park service told him that if he didn't have the boat off by Friday, which is tomorrow, that they were gonna salvage it. Because the, the only other option they had to get it removed was another salvage company that wanted 20 grand, and they weren't even gonna pull it back into the water. They were gonna cut it into pieces, so. What do you do? I mean, I spent $20,000 to get this thing out of here. I do a lot of work for $20,000. Yeah. That's this guy's home. It's the only place he has to live. He doesn't have a lot of money, and we're not about to see this guy go homeless. So uh, this morning we launched two trucks, one hauling the big Navy boat and one hauling the Sisu Nasu with the guys down to Vegas. Uh, they should be pulling into town right about now. We're jumping in the Epic. We're flying down to Boulder. Hans is going to pick us up, and then from there we're headed straight over to what's called Colville Bay. Uh, it's a little area there on Lake Mead. We're gonna meet up with the rest of the group and get this thing done. And this is gonna be a very tricky recovery because the boat is all fiberglass and it doesn't have very many good hook points to pull from. So we actually had to fabricate, I'll show you, based off of a couple of like blurry, weird pictures that uh, I received, I fabricated these brackets that uh, I'm hoping we can mount to each side of the boat and bolt through the hole and be able to pull from these. Because without this, we will have no way to pull that boat back into the water. And it's gonna be some serious tugging. So we've got winches on the Sisu Nasu. We've got winches on the Navy boat. Anyways, we gotta get in the air and uh, buckle up because this is gonna be a wild one. Like a wild, wild, wild one. I'm excited, you excited? You're ready. You're, you are even look wild right now. You just look sexy. I'm just ready Why are you doing your sexy done. face? Why are you doing your low voice? What do you mean? No, don't do that. Jason, you ready? Why did you put the whole thing in your mouth? <laughs> we got the real MVP, Mikanal over there. 
he's ready to do some serious Whoa. work. I Listen, when you see my man show up, that means it's about to get weird. Uh, I think this might be his first airplane ride too, so that's gonna be All fun. All right, so you guys know that we're getting ready to head down and do this big houseboat recovery, right? Like going to be probably pretty gnarly however we just got a call from a guy here locally who called and he's like hey i'm stuck can you come help me out and he's just right down the road so before we head down to lake mead we're going to go see what's going on and see if we can do like a two for a two for one yeah two for one to get a double recovery so we're going to go check that. this out see what's going on we're going to jump in the uh, diesel power gear giveaway truck which is the truck we're giving away this month so it's like the ultimate work truck and if anything can do a recovery right now especially like a quick easy like local one this is our guy so we're gonna see what's going on. Get in. Let's go. Okay, so he said he's down on the old dump road. The old dump road? Yeah, uh, he's just stuck. It's a weird, it's like a random, very random location to be stuck. Yeah, I have no idea how he actually got my phone number. We don't really have, we don't necessarily have a ton of time for this because we're on a time crunch to get to Vegas as it is right now, so. Uh, hopefully this is just kind of a quick and easy, just tuck him out of the, it's kind of like a marshy area where he's at, so I'm guessing he probably was just pulled off the side of the road or something and kind of got stuck, but we shall see. We will put the uh, old Yankum Brodozer rope to good use. Did he say what he was driving? No, no idea, but I mean, there's, if there's something stuck, it's just going to be right here. Should we ask this guy? Hey man, you haven't seen any stuck trucks around here, have you? No, I just got this empty can of gas. Good. Wait, is your name Cole? Yeah. Are you who just called me? Yeah. Where's your truck? Oh, back there. I just, I it's, just needed some gas. But I don't have any money, so. Your truck's not stuck in the mud? No. It's just back there. But, uh, said oh. if I could fill this up, they so you called me, you said you were stuck, you needed a recovery, but you're just out of fuel. It's kind of stuck out of fuel. I can see that, but we were looking to maybe just pull your truck out of the mud. Oh, no need. No, no need. Truck's good. Just fuel. Huh. All right, you know what, guys? Since this isn't an actual recovery, it's an ad, a very creative one at that because we got your attention, we're going to give the first 1,776 of you to place an order starting right now a fuel card and that card is going to be worth anywhere from five dollars to a thousand dollars but if you don't place your order right now well there's probably going to be 1776 well 1775 people ahead of you that get that card and then you'll miss out on that opportunity plus don't forget that when you place that order not only are you going to get that fuel card but you're also going to get entries to win the badass ram giveaway truck so listen this is a no-brainer this really is a no-brainer and this truck is super sick. So you should probably go to thesepowergear.com right now, click the link in my description below, get your fuel card, get your entries to win the truck, and don't miss out. Uh, let's do it. Where are you sitting? Continue to receive this message. <laughs> Contact your dealer. Don't go towards the light. We know it's hot. It's party time, right, David? It is party time. Are we running AC or no Turn AC? Heat I'd say no AC. Turn the heat on. Oh, Windows God. up. You heat up. Let's see how skinny we get. Heat's up. AC off. Yeah. Bring it on. We're gonna die in here. Do you actually turn up the heat? Yes. Oh, that's crazy. Oh, hi. So we've been under the or like this extreme sense of urgency, like rushing to get down here. Uh, right before we took off Salt Lake, I got a phone call back finally from uh, the park service, and they're like, "Hey, like, there's a process here. You're gonna have to you're gonna have to fill out these forms, get a permit, do all these different things." Uh, fortunately, they were really cool about it because they obviously understand the predicament and they understand the sense of urgency. So the whole park service office here and the management of the lake. Um, stepped up big time, which is big for a federal government. You know, normally you don't see that kind of action. So they've been great. Uh, there's a, the top enforcement officer that we're gonna go meet with, his name is Phil. Uh, we didn't know that the marina where this guy's stuck, kind of the Bay Area, that the launch ramp is closed there and that there's only one ramp open in the lake, which is right here in your boulder. Well, the problem is our boats and equipment are over there by the other one, so they're like an hour away. So not only did we lose like three hours in the permit process, but now we're losing another hour waiting for them to get over this side of the lake so we can launch and then we have to drive up lake another 20 minutes and then 
that puts us without the Sisunasu because uh, we can't drag it up lake. I mean, it's amphibious, but it goes like two miles an hour. We were banking on being able to access from the shore with that vehicle. So now we're down to basically the army boat, the, or the navy boat. If the navy boat can't pull it, then it's gonna change things a little bit. So there's a lot of things working against us right now. And then the final thing that I just got hit with was on um, my phone call with the park service, they were like, okay, so your plan is to take the boat off the lake and get rid of it, right? And we're like, no, we're taking it back to Craig's slip at Colville Bay, which is where he told me he had a slip. California burritos and two breakfast burritos. Burritos are done, so that's a good sign. That's, that's some good news. So they were under the impression that we were taking the boat off the lake because apparently they don't want the boat on the lake anymore because they don't like the fact that he's been living on it. I didn't know any of that. None of it, it's like we're working with very little information. I didn't know that it wasn't okay to live in the boat. I didn't, I don't know any of the details that's going on here. So we're in a situation now where fortunately we've got some burritos, um, but now we have to tow his boat they're telling me on the permit that we have to tow his boat to a completely different marina, which is the one we're about to drop the boats in at, and away from where his he's been staying. I don't think Craig knows that yet. He's not gonna be happy about that, the owner of the boat. One more kiss of beer. This is basically the launch point and the beginning of our travels, the beginning of the adventure. Buckle up, put on your Shalaco Salvavidas. Okay. Oh boy. This is uh we're not taking the seesaw off, we're taking the timbers off. Poles. Oh. Hey man, just pushing. Pushing those logs through. Just being a man. Just doing man things. If you were hit up by Mountain Dew to be sponsored, would you take it? Definitely. Smoke man. Smoke man. <laughs> Oh boy, oh no. <laughs> Can I get it high enough? Oh jeez, Alan. <laughs> Missled that thing at me. Yeah, I made it. You got a pink gas can? Been a minute since I've been in this boat. Got to remember the controls. Remember, there's six levers and a steering wheel that I have to do simultaneously to get this boat to do anything. But I think I remember how. I don't know if you guys noticed, but we had another uh, new team member today. Mini me, Captain Bo. This is my uh, oldest son. How old are you? Um, seven. Seven. So he turned seven, and now it's time to. Uh, now it's time to introduce him to the world of recoveries. <laughs> Look how deep that expedition oh is. Mountain mining. Alan, it's a fan! You hear <laughs> <laughs> Holy moly. <laughs> He's filming him with the GoPro. <laughs> what do you think? What do you try to capture with that? The moment that there's people over there. Yeah, we passed the gate already. Right? Alan, did you have your first band moment? How are you feeling right now? You're blushing. This isn't the first. You're blushing. Oh, this isn't the first. He tries funny. to play it off like he's not blushing. Oh, uh, you say hello to her. Right 
There's the boat we're gonna rescue. I feel pretty good about it, actually. I feel really good about it. Yeah, so take a look. Totally wizard. And we stumbled across Craig here. Uh, he got beached a little while ago because his motor died and the water level left him high and dry, so. Filmed it, people have been loving it, and everybody started tagging you guys in it, so. It's crazy you guys are here, it's wild. Great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, are you okay if we? Let me I'm show you what we're I'm thinking. Okay with <laughs> they tried to tow him out, and that failed. So, it, it was pretty, he had lost all hope. And then when everybody started tagging, you know, you guys, you guys showed up, and hopefully we can get it unstuck. We would like to bolt on right sure, here. You bet. You okay bet. with that? You so that we've it. got a couple of spots to pull you from better, on both sides. You better believe it. We'll seal them up, caulk them up. That way you can whether you can take them off if you want or leave okay, them on. Okay. It'll be waterproof. Okay. He's 15 yards from the water now, so it's going to be a hard task. We were here two days ago, and the water was probably two feet higher. Okay. It's basically just going to sit kind of oh, like. Oh cool, yeah. Yep. I'm with you totally. Kind of like that. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. We'll get you out of here. I thought, we're going to get. I it. thought I was going to lose it. How long have you been here? Three weeks. Jeez. So our plan at first is we're going to try to winch you, and see if the winch can can pull you backwards. Okay. How long have you been on the lake? Like uh, about general. three months is all. Three months? Yeah, not very long. What do you do for work? Uh, carpenter. Carpenter. Yeah, I retired now. Yeah. The uh, recovery company told you twenty grand, huh? Uh huh. And was that to get it back in the water, or was that to just basically get rid of it? No, just get it back in the water. Make it back in the water. Let's start it off. I called them on a Thursday. Yeah. About four grand to tow it out of here. Yeah. Well, we come next Tuesday, water went down about that much more. So the price went to twenty grand. More, yeah. It went from a tow to a salvage. Yeah. 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 Okay, man. Well, we're gonna get to work on okay. it. So if we can get this thing sliding, then we'll just pull it straight out to the water. He's been doing some work over here, pumping this, trying to get it washed out, which is definitely gonna help a little bit. Friends, I went bought a bunch of water pumps, and I made many dredges. What I did, but the water was going down faster than what I could dredge. So I tried, but I lost my battle. So it was over. I can't believe it. Was, good people in the world anymore because I've been screwed over so many times with that. But no, everything's good and it's great now that they're here. It's been quite an ordeal. I mean, anything and everything that could go wrong did. Everything, it seems like. It is, it's been a ride. It's been a ride. It would be great if we could pull it that way, but that's all just kind of a shallow, mucky bay, whereas right there is deep water. So I think we're just going to be relying on the winch to do as much dragging as possible. 6.30, sun's going down. I think we're in the water by the time midnight hits. There's a wood with holes. Where, I mean, the saw, I think the softness is just gonna go down like 10 or 15 feet, which means our long poles, sides, we only have our long poles are gonna be irrelevant. Come on, bud. Bud looks real confident. Oh, oh. backed out. Go, cool, bud. You can do it. Don't be scared. I've seen you conquer mountains before. What's this? Everybody checked in the base before. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Perfecto. Perfecto mundo. Perfect. I like it. Next. Okay, I think that's and good. That's plenty for the wood. Come on. He hasn't wood. grabbed yet. I'm like, I think he's like the one that's like. What are you, what are you thinking? Hey, come on, come on. Why are you giving me so light? That's this. Will you give him and you give me this? Oh. Yeah, I just keep doing it. Definitely grabbing. Yeah, keep running. I like those new anchor points. I love them. There you go. Now you can pull some water skiers. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, go trolling with us. I would probably start digging. I had a big boat like that and it weighed like, it wasn't that big, but it was fiberglass. And I think it weighed, I want to say 25,000 pounds. So that thing's probably every bit of 35 to 40,000. Just guessing, it's pure guess. Bob Barker said it stands for. Uh, Dave? 
do me a favor and turn on the power switch, not the upper one, but the one just below it on the front. Not the very bottom one, that one's already on. I I'm just turning. Gonna... Yeah, it works. I'll bet you, I'll bet you Craig has a flag on his boat. I'm gonna go get you a little flag for the top, okay? Let's go find it, come on. Come on. Unbelievable. Really care yeah. about your well-being, which is nice to see, you know? Oh, absolutely. It restores your faith in humanity. Because I help so many people and I never get nothing back from nobody. Else yeah, anybody. well. Karma comes around. Yeah, I think it, does. it came around big time. For it does big time. time here. Big time here. There's a lot of people that want to support you. So oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Oh yeah. You don't have any miniature flags, do you? You don't have any small American flags. No, I don't. He's, he's trying to find a flag at the top of his castle. Oh. He, he's determined. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna find something. I do not have one. I'm expecting big things out of this flag. <laughs> I need to find a mark. I need to grab all the or we could do a black flag, because that'd be cool. Just got a lot of pressure on this flag. <laughs> the flag of the USA, Coca-Cola cup. Yeah, that's looking nice. Kind of looks like a narwhal coming out of the sand. Whoa! Okay. Um, I'm gonna go use the restroom right here real quick. <laughs> hey, you know, no cameras allowed. <laughs> Shoe. Craig's here. We're about to get his boat back in the water. I feel pretty good about it. Will it pull? I think it's gonna pull, 100%. I think so. You guys look like you're pretty confident and got this set up pretty well, so I'm I'm confident it'll pull. And you and you guys do this all the time, so you know, it should work. <laughs> Will it pull? Yes. No. Oh, maybe T. T. No. <laughs> yeah. Well, it could be if we put enough uh, vegetable shortening underneath the boat and slick it up really good. So it's just like running on a, like a sand. Yes. Yes, that's one word. It is crazy. We'll get it though. Oh, oh yeah, well, I know it. sand right now. It's gonna slide a lot better on wood. It's not sliding at all on the sand right now. Hasn't moved. I seen it, it even didn't slide. even wiggle. <laughs> all that winching it didn't didn't move an inch. Really? Yeah, and it didn't even break the sand. Huh. You've got me excited twice. Both times I was like it was moving? No, it's fine. <laughs> Let's be clear. I don't know what it didn't move. I don't think he's in the Grand Canyon. He's gonna see if it moves. It was not moving. <laughs> really? He's gonna see if it moves. <laughs> so two fat lengths together? to the back of the boat? Yep. Running side by side or long ways? Lengthwise. Okay. So, the winch has plenty of strength. The problem is it has so much strength 
and it wants to pull our boat up onto the beach rather than Craig's boat off the beach. So we got to break the original suction that's happening under there. So we're going to flip around and hope that our tow points that we hooked onto the back of this boat are strong enough to be able to let us give it a couple good, you know, hard bumps with the Yankum rope. And since the Yankum ropes have uh, kinetic energy, that's going to really help us kind of be gentle on the boat while still giving it enough of a tug to be able to possibly move it. A lot of that. torque right up on the yeah, top. That's a pretty beefy plate there, though. We're either going to get that boat off the beach in one piece and get it back to Craig's slip in the marina and he'll be happy, or I'm going to rip that boat in half trying to get it out of here and I'm going to buy Craig a new boat. He doesn't know that yet, but uh, I'm committed. We've got two more of these on the boat. Just got to trust his mini bumps don't turn into mega bumps. That's my only concern. Mini bumps only. Hey, someone throw me a Gatorade, please. I feel like there's not much tension on that at all right now. No, there's not. You don't know what it's like to get split. Oh! I think it was the wind, Jason. Was it? <laughs> Launching rocks at us. Oh, yeah. Hey, just a little bit. Make sure you bring know where that is. I fell down. <laughs> <laughs> I got launched. Oh, she's moving now. Yeah, just keep doing that. Yeah. Dude, this is like what we didn't want to have to do, but we're just going full bananas on her. Just doing slingshot tugs. And uh, it's working. The boat's moving. It's uh, super sketchy. I'm, sh I'm sure the rangers over there are just losing their minds. But pretty cool. Pretty cool, Alec. Do you think Bud's happy, Bo? Mm -hmm. I'm hangry. <laughs> I, I, get a sandwich. Ate, I haven't ate all day today.
lady's just sitting in there watching TV or something. She's just sitting on the couch while doing all of this. What? Oh no, it's blinking. It's a time lapse. Yeah, I think. but it went off and then came back on. Are you a time lapse? Are you a... You're not time lapse. You're not a time lapse. Get on a couple of those logs. It's about five feet is what you've done. <laughs> well, I just wanted to check the hook points and everything. I'm just gonna keep doing the wigwag pattern. That's basically. We're getting the most by far. Like those last things you were doing, it hardly moved at all. But if you do those big tugs, that's the best movement we've seen. I don't think we've heard any creaks on these hook points recently. So let us maybe try to grab, clear the rest of this beach right here real quick while we're at it. Just everything. That's the only entertainment we have, man. You just get going from here to Narnia. Those water bottles so nice, and you sent them. There is. Oh, did somebody come grab them already? We moved it a solid five feet, which is huge because getting that those first five feet is where we break all the suction. And I want to say at this point, we're just going full cowboy. There's no, there's no method to this madness. We're literally just going until something breaks. juice in like three hours. this like ridiculous like hard work and like thinking and complex problem solving and then when it just comes together to the moment of extraction love it man it's a very that's 15 plus hours of planning setting yeah. eight hours of driving yep. setting it up for the moment of getting it back in the water is pure bliss oh yeah ready yeah. 
we can cut them. We can cut them correct. I think I think it's fine. <laughs> Everything important Woo! from the inside. Woo! Holy cow. <laughs> it may not look like it. Those are violent. Heart in that one, David. Alright, here we go. Come on, baby. Back at it. Flash Mountain. Close. Getting close to Splash Mountain there, Bo. Fire up the engine. She's out there. Get that engine started. It's working! Ready, Bo? Oh, whoa. One more! One more! <laughs> one more! There's always one more. Yeah, one more. She's out. Uh, just backed up. You're good. Yep. Craig, what are you thinking? Oh, that thing's awesome, man. This might be the one. Nice work, Jim! Nice, nice work, Jim! Woo! Yeah! Woo! Yeah! Yeah, baby! Woo! Alright, unhook these ropes. Yes. Got it! Let's do this! Got her, man! <laughs> Thank you, man! Yeah, buddy! Thank you, the boys! <laughs> we sure are! Thank you! Yep! Woo! -hoo -hoo. The old Craig Express is floating, baby. Oh man, that is gratifying. I'll tell you right now, the relief that we feel is probably nothing compared to the reef that old Craig is feeling right now. <laughs> wow. Someone get on that boat. <laughs> now what? Yeah, don't shit. It's floating away. <laughs> See you later. How do you swim? We just did it the brute beast way. Probably 12, 13, just hard, hard, full speed runs. And uh, she floats. We drug her down probably uh, close to 100, 150 feet of beach. And now she's in the water, baby. Oh, you said it'll run? I think. Was fired up? I'm, I'm way fired up. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> like plugging in, hot shower. So you guys obviously saw what happened. We came and we tried the proper way of snatch blocking and winching it, which normally would work, but we it was just a wrestling match and 40,000, 50,000 pound houseboat versus our 20,000 pound boat. Uh, and we were in the water. I mean, it was a, wasn't a fight we were gonna win without a lot more anchors. So the winch was doing exactly what it was supposed to do, but ultimately just pulled my boat straight up on the shore. So basically we had, uh, we had one last option and that was to just go ham.
<laughs> and that's exactly Just what we did. the Yankum ropes right yeah, there. Yeah. Well, well, we trust the Yankum ropes. Obviously, we use them for all sorts of different stuff. Come over here. More like show everybody that the Yankum ropes can do just about anything. Yeah, I mean, we, we abuse the hell out of the Yankum ropes. Uh, you guys have seen it time and time again, and today was no different. The only thing that actually scared me is we had a section of cable in there with the Yankum ropes. I'd never have been worried about a Yankum rope brain kick and like coming back at me. Um, today was a little nerve wracking because with that big section of cable, and I was going, you know, full speed ahead, full throttle. To just dead stops and yeah. i think we did 12 or 13 really hard oh, hard, hard ones and you can see the, the trail of tears right here we thing. pulled we pulled that boat at least 200 feet dead weight across the beach out of a suction cup hole yeah that's the fact that those are our steel plates that we that we built didn't rip the boat apart and didn't come out themselves pretty proud of that so my dude jose i told you He's when we got in the plane like when that man's coming it means business yeah and uh and he never, ever, ever lets us down when it comes to just making sure that shit's tight. Jose, well, so, you earned your teardrop tattoo today. Oh, can we give? Everybody gets one, right? All of us get one? Yeah. Do we earn it? So anyways, guys, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Craig is safe and sound. Well, Actually, he's, he's, he's floating. <laughs> we did, <laughs> we <laughs> unhooked him, so he's just kind of floating in the abyss over there. But we're going to go over there, hook up to him, <laughs> drag him back to the marina, put him in his slip, and then we are going to head back to the other marina, which is about a 20-minute boat ride, load up the boat, and uh, get some of these guys some sleep and get some of these guys in an airplane. And uh, we got Sin City Outdoors. Don't forget to check out their channel. These are the guys who made this happen. They've been out here, uh, they're fishermen, right? They're bass fishermen, but they also love their lake, their hometown, and they come out and they've been kind of reporting and updating people on what's going on. And their videos gained a lot of momentum. And obviously the one with Craig, I think, tugged at a lot of heartstrings of a lot of you know caring people. Oh, yeah. I've never received so many emails in my entire life about a specific subject. I'm telling you, you guys sent me an email every 30 seconds from the minute their video aired to like probably my phone's still going off the hook. So I think not only is Craig going to be happy, but we're all happy, but all of you viewers know that Craig is safe and sound. And it's all thanks to these fellas right here. So boys, nice work. Yeah, good, good work I'll take Thank one of those. So much.